Hollywood. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed here. Well, good morning, George. Bad morning, Johnny. Ah, what's the matter? Do you remember Josiah Gillis? Eccentric old man loves animals? Sure. Well, for the second time, his doctor's into issuing a special coverage policy on an item he wanted insured. And for the second time, it's disappeared, huh? That's right. I hope it's not another singing mouse. I'm afraid it's something worse. An articulate canine. Articulate what? Dog, Johnny. An articulate dog? You mean a talking dog? Yep. Oh, no. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I didn't know about mice. I do know about dogs. And I've never heard one yet that could say anything but rough. Well, maybe you haven't, but Michael Murphy has. Michael Murphy? Iron Mike Murphy, vice president of Milford Steel. Oh, what's he got to do with it? Well, he's the former owner of the articulating canine. Gillis bought the dog from him? According to this application, he did. Hmm. When did it happen? Oh, about three weeks ago. First I heard of it was when Gillis called from New York asking for the coverage. How much insurance does he have on the credit? Mm, the maximum we'd allow, 7500 75 Oh, no, no, George. That's hardly worth my time. I can't make any commission from a small policy like that. Why don't you pay him off and forget it? I'd like to, Johnny, but it isn't that simple. No? No. Since you found his mouth, Gillis thinks you're some kind of a miracle worker. Oh, pied piper, you mean. Or pie-eyed something, or really. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the boys upstairs have agreed to let you write your own ticket again, providing... Yeah? Providing you locate the dog. Or in the event you don't, you pass by Gillis. Keep him happy so that he doesn't cancel his other policy. And if I can't do either? Then you wind up with your regular commission and expense account, which our auditors will check and double-check. Hmm. A real sucker bet. But okay, George, you've got yourself a deal. Expense account item two, 85 cents, cab fare back to my apartment. Item three, 26 dollars, transportation, Hartford to New York City, including cab fare to the Statler Hotel. By the time I checked in, changed my shirt, it was 8.30. I picked up the phone and called the number George Reed had given me. Hello? May I speak to Mr. Gillis, please? Johnny, Johnny Pollard. Dad told me you were coming. Well, hi. Hi, is that all? I guess this is Marion. Yeah, yeah, I know. I had a hunch your father was staying at your place. $1.70 taxi from the Statler to the East 51st Street address. The entrance to the building faced toward Beekman Place, and one side of it looked out over the East River. I could hear the noise from apartment 4C before I stepped off the elevator. Marion had a good many friends, which figured because of her blonde hair, gray eyes, and a few other... Well, yeah. I pressed the buzzer and waited. I was about to press it again when a door opened further off down the hall. Hi! Hmm? Oh, Marion! Johnny, I hope you don't mind sneaking into the kitchen. But Dad made it very clear that he wants to see you now and alone. Alone? With that mob in there? <laughs> He's waiting for you in the den. It's this way. How have you been? Oh, fine. Fine, just fine. <laughs> Sounds like quite a party. <laughs> it is. I sent out the invitations before the pup disappeared. I offered to call it off, but Dad wouldn't let me. Any special kind of celebration? I think so. It's to announce my engagement. You're... Well, what do you know? <laughs> Who's the lucky man? His name's Bill Fisher. He's an executive with the Powers Advertising Agency. Mm, real big-time operator, huh? He just talked one of his clients into putting on a new TV show. Well, you know you have all my good wishes. Oh, Bill, we were just talking about well, you. I wondered where you disappeared to. Bill, this is Johnny Dollar. Hi, congratulations. You're getting a fine girl. Yes, I think so. Thunderation, my called? Yes. Oh, it's Dollar, so you finally decided to get here. Hello, Mr. Gillis. Come in, come in, come in. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll see you later, Johnny. Yes, sure. Yeah. You ready to go to work? Yes, sir. Whenever you are. <laughs> Whenever I am, you're the one getting paid to be a detective. 
Well, I can't do my job without your cooperation, Mr. Gillis. Uh, well, what do you want me to do? Just answer a couple of questions. Just answer them. Didn't that sweet pea of an agent tell you all you need to know? Well, he couldn't. He didn't know anything except that a dog you have insured. A dog? A dog, you say? Is that what you call her? Why, you miserable, cold-hearted... A dog. Well, isn't that what you've lost, Mr. Gillis? No! And don't you ever let me hear you calling that if she's a little lady. If you must refer to the type of being she is, well, she's a... She's a canine. Okay. Uh, do you mind telling me under what circumstances the uh, canine disappeared? I wouldn't mind at all. And please call her Ming Toy. Beg your pardon? Ming Toy, that's her name. Ming Toy Murphy. What's the matter, you dog? Are you deep? Uh, no, uh, isn't that kind of an unusual name for a dog? A canine? Oh, you think so? She was how stupid that she's a Chinese. Chinese? A chi- yes, a Pekingese. A, chi- a Pekingese. And being as the first owner's name was Murphy, the whole thing, Moon Toy Murphy, just fits here to a T. Uh, yeah. Now, exactly when did you notice Ming Toy was missing? Oh, uh, since we got back from breakfast, you see, I left Ming Toy in here, locked up safe and sound. But when we got back, the door was standing open. The front door? No, 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 not to the, this door. Right? And Ming Toy was gone? Of course she was gone. That's what all this fuss is about. But the front apartment door was closed. It, it? was, and if somebody's come in here and stolen her, they'd have had sense enough to close the front door when they left. You're, uh... For sure, somebody did steal. I don't know what to think. All I know is mean tired missing. Canine animals like her don't grow on trees. Oh, well, you mean because of her uh, <clears throat> special talent? Well, now you're getting my boy. Yes, uh, because she can talk. Oh, now, well, Mister Gillis, can you honestly say you've heard her speak? Speak, a man. All dogs can speak, but mean tired. Talk. Just like a human being, I suppose. Yeah. I see you don't believe me. <laughs> well, you just march yourself over here to this tape recorder. Oh, oh, Mr. Gillis, if she can talk like you say, it's still going to take me a while to kind of get used to it. You idea. and the whole country, providing we get it back. The whole country? TV, boy. What? Television. A new show called The Big Shock. The first one's on tomorrow night. What's the matter? Don't you read the papers? Anyway, they started advertising about two weeks ago. Looking for a dog that could say, Happy Hollow Dog Food is yum, yum, yummy. Happy Hollow Dog Food? That's the company spots in the show. Go on. They're going to open their show with the animals saying that slogan, you see. And today I was going to take Ming Toy down there and let her say it. And collect the fifty thousand dollars. What fifty thousand dollars? The fifty thousand dollars they're offering to give for a dog that can say, "Happy Hollow oh, Dog." Oh, right, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yes, well, anyway, when I first heard about this, I remembered Mike Murphy had said something to me over a year ago about having a, a canine in his kennel that could talk some. So I went over there three weeks ago, and I bought her. Was the ad in the paper at that time? No, of course it wasn't. Well, how did you know it was going to be? Marion told me. How did she know? Uh, that dress dummy she's fixing to marry. The advertising agency he works at, they're, they're the ones that taught the happy, hollow people into putting on that show. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, you see, you know, it's about time. I also see that you don't exactly approve of Fisher for a son-in-law. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I don't approve. I don't disapprove of him. If she wants to marry a stuffed shirt, that's her business, you know. Let me play this tape recording for you. You're going to hear the sweetest little voice this side of China. Ah, now then, me little bitch. <laughs> you see, now set and ready we for made this with okay. Mike Murphy. All right, girl. Now talk to me. Pretty now. Talk pretty. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hey, you see? She said hello. That's a dog. That's a canine. Be quiet. Be quiet. Very good, lad. Now tell me, how are you feeling these fine days? Hey, what happened? She saw a cat. What did you think? Oh. <laughs> you still doubt she can talk, Nello? Uh, I think I'd like to see it with my own eyes. Have you put an ad in the lost and found columns of the papers? Of course. <laughs> what about the people in this building? Then I had Morris. He's the super. Put a note. Super? The janitor. They call them supers in the city. Say, so what's the matter with you? Don't you know anything? 
I had to put a notice in each apartment telling them to be on the lookout for her. But so far, nobody said a word. And naturally, they wouldn't because she's not around here. She's been stolen. Oh, now, look, why would anyone want to steal her? They couldn't put stolen property well, on TV. Well, maybe it could have been somebody doing it for spite. Like who? Yes, like Iron Mike Murphy. You know, too. He's been saying nasty things to me, claiming I cheated him out of mean toy. Well, did you? Of course I did. Mr. Gillis, is there any other possible way she could have gotten out of this room? Well, now, there's several... Oh, no. Huh? No, no, it hurts me just to think about it. Oh, dear. That, uh, that window. Window? Yes, yes. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Was that open yesterday morning? Yes, it was open. I forgot to close it. Oh, dear. Well, what's down below there? Nothing, nothing. Nothing but the East River. I continued questioning him, making sure he'd given me all the facts. Then after promising to take him along when I visited Iron Mike Murphy, I said goodnight and left. Expense account item five, one dollar and seventy cents for a cab back to my hotel. The next morning I called Murphy and wangled an invitation to his Long Island home. At exactly nine o'clock, I was in front of the Gillis apartment. Hey, mister, mister. Mm, yeah? You looking for Mr. Gillis? No, Mr. Gillis. You seen him? Ah, sure, sure. When they go out to put their breakfast. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, do you uh, pick up the trash and garbage from the apartments every morning? That's uh, my job, senor. Well, what time do you usually hit this floor? Oh, the same time as an hour, about to nine o'clock. Uh-huh. Do the Gillises go out for breakfast every morning at this time? Almost every morning. What about the uh, day before yesterday? The before, oh, when the little one disappeared, yeah. see, it was the same hour. Uh-huh. Tell me, Morris, uh, do you remember seeing anyone on this floor that morning? You know, one who did not have a business to hear? But there was someone? Ah, see, si, see. Si. Near the Gillis apartment? Where you stand, waiting at the meeting. Well, who was it, you know? Oh, no, I don't know his name. Am I... Yeah, yeah. He's a, such a nice gentleman, and he carried what I know as another present for Mr. Gillis. I told him they were out for their breakfast, and he went away. You still haven't told me who it was, Morris. My heavens, senor. Who else would bring a Mr. Gillis such a pretty box, or such a beautiful gift? Who else but the gentleman she's soon to marry? <laughs> Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Ming Toy Murphy Matter. People in love usually keep on hours, so I wasn't surprised that Morris the janitor had seen Marion Gillis's fiance outside the apartment the morning the dog, pardon me, canine, had disappeared. I think Morris for his help went back downstairs to my cab where I saw the Gillises walking toward me from First Avenue. Morning, Gallery. Morning. Sorry we're late. Got to gabbing over that second cup of coffee. Better not let your doctor hear you say that. No, no, Marion. Be still. Yes, you ready, Gallery? Ready and waiting, Mr. Gillis. And then let's go. I've got a few things I can't wait to say to Mr. Iron Mike Murphy. Now remember, Dad, no excitement. I'll remember. remember. Marion. Yes? Are you going to be busy around noon? No, I don't think so far. Uh, just thought we might have lunch together. 21? Anywhere you like. Say, 12.30? Perfect. See you then. According to Mr. Gillis, Iron Mike Murphy didn't know that Ming Toy was missing, so it was going to be interesting to see his reactions when we told him. The Murphy home was squared across a couple of acres near Great Neck. The main house was a large two-story brick affair with a pack room, swimming pool, and the kennels behind it. Or Aaron Mike pursued his hobby of raising Pekingese dogs. He found Murphy at the camera. Well, Gillis, you lion, Stephen Dibble. You hold your tongue, Mike. What are you doing out here anyway? I came along to help Mr. Dollar. He doesn't know you like I do, so he wouldn't be able to tell when you're lying like I can. Ah, I suppose you think that's funny. Dollar, you know what this man did to me? He stole a wonderful little dog right out from under me now. And you stole her back. Well, what do you mean by you that? You know man? what I mean. The day after you called me on the phone, you saw that ad in the paper. Well, the next day, somebody stole mean toy. And I'm sure it was you. 
You shanty Irishman. Who are you, dirty-minded evil old man? I've half a mind to take a horse whip to you for saying such a thing. Oh, you deny it, Ed. Of course I deny it. And you say it again, I'll deny it with me fist. Oh, is that so? Well, I whipped you when you are in the steel mills, and I can whip you now. Look out, fella. Oh, Mr. Gillis, remember what your daughter said. Defend yourself, Murphy. Mr. Gillis. Bring yourself at me, Gillis. Taxi. Taxi. Mr. Gillis, please, Mr. Murphy. Here I come. Ooh. Ah. When it was over, Mr. Gillis had a black eye and Murphy a bloody nose. Gillis and I went back to town. Kids, there are twelve dollars. That's item six. After seeing Mr. Gillis safely to his apartment, I went across town to the twenty-one. Marion arrived, we were shown to a table, and I told her as quickly as I could what had happened at the Murphy home. Johnny, you know Father isn't supposed to get excited. I know, he knows, and I tried to stop him, but he wasn't so upset over losing Maine Troy or anything else. Well, especially something as strenuous as a fight. Well, it might prove to be too much. Oh, he's all right, believe me. Well, I'm calling in a few minutes to be sure. Marion, this morning while I was waiting for you to come back from breakfast, I, uh, I had a talk with Morris, the super at your apartment. No? Yeah, he... Hello, uh... Marion, darling. Oh, darling. well, I told you to join us, Johnny. I hope you don't mind. Um, no, no, of course not. Sit down. No, thanks. Johnny's been out all morning with Dad. Oh? Hunting for the dog, huh? That's right. Any luck? I'm not sure. Excuse us, Bill. But what does Morris have to say, Johnny? Oh, it wasn't important. Don't try lying to me, Johnny Dollar. I know you too well. Now, you tell us. What more have to say? Bill, the morning the dog disappeared, you were at Marion's apartment, weren't you? Of course he wasn't. Bill, day before yesterday? No. You sure? Positive. I was in my office all morning. What time did you get there? you remember? Yes, we've been very busy lately getting the big shot ready for the air. It was about 8.45. Your secretary will swear to that? Naturally. Johnny, what's this all? Excuse me. Where are you going? I'll make a couple of phone calls. Be right back. I called Bill's office, spoke to his secretary, and of course he had lied. Instead of going back to the table, I took a cab to my hotel, made a couple of more phone calls, and waited. About 40 minutes later, Bill Fisher called and asked me to meet him at a bar near Rockefeller Center. You like a drink, Johnny? No, thanks. Not right now. No? I figured you'd be thirsty. You've been such a busy little boy. Ah, what do you mean? You know what I mean. Calling my secretary, then calling the happy hollow people to find out whose idea it was to advertise offering 50 grand for a talking dog. Oh, I wouldn't be ashamed of having that idea if I were you. It's a good one. Except for one thing. It was meant strictly for the publicity value. Nobody ever heard of a dog that could really talk, so I guaranteed them their 50,000 would be safe. Go on. See, it was tough enough getting the Happy Hollow people to put a show on TV in the first place. They really don't have that kind of money. And if they'd had to pay out the 50 grand on top of everything else, well, that would be it. We'd lose their account, I'd lose my job. Uh Uh-huh. So what did you do with Ming Toy? Well, naturally, since she could talk, I had to get rid of her. You understand that, don't you? How did you get into the Gillis apartment? That was easy. I'd been there the night before. When I left, I slipped the latch so the door wouldn't lock. When they went out to breakfast the next morning, I went in. I was going to put her in that box and carry her out, but she put up such a fuss, I... Well, I just tossed her out the window. Into the river? Yes, Dollar, into the East River. But what can I do about it? After all, Ming Toy was only a dog. It wasn't like she was a person. Well, what can I do about it? I'm not sure. But whatever it is, I hope it's plenty. I left him there and walked down 6th Avenue. When I reached the corner of 51st, I called Marion and asked her to meet me in a little park near her apartment building. Somehow, I told her, as simply and directly as I could. Well, it's kind of funny, isn't it, Johnny? I don't know. Isn't it? Sure. If I hadn't met Bill, none of this would ever have happened. Dad would still be feeling chipper. I might have been engaged to somebody else. Maybe even a nice guy like you. Why do things like this have to happen? I don't know, Marion. I just don't know. We were about a block away from her apartment when we heard the end. 
We watched the turn in the 51st Street, then stopped. Then we were running. It's Dad, I know it. No, no, you don't know any such thing. Oh. All right, folks, all right. Now, keep back. Give the men room for work. Johnny, they, they're and not going in the building. No, no, they're doing something out there in the middle of the street. All is there. Officer! Oh, Officer, what's happened? It sounds like a little girl's caught down there under the street. Under the street? Yeah, lady, in the drain pipe that goes down to the river. Are you sure it's a little girl and not a dog? You kidding? Dogs can't talk like that. Like what? Like, well, it sounds like she's trying to say something about a dog food being <laughs> yum, yum, yummy. Get your fire, Marion. Yes, oh, yes. Excuse me. Hey, come back here. I joined the power and water men who had lifted up a manhole cover and put down a ladder. Didn't take us long under the street, just a couple of minutes. Then we climbed back out again. Johnny! Bella! Bella! Where is she? Where's my baby? She's still down there, Mr. Gillis. Uh, you left her? Bella, she's not. No, 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 sir, she's fine. Then why didn't you bring her back? Well, uh, maybe you'd better look for yourself, Mr. Gillis. All right, I'll do just that. Dad, you can't. You just try stopping me, will Come on, Bella. Come on. Come Honey, honey, sit here. Careful now, Mr. Gillis. Yes, watch your step. Don't you worry about me. You just, you just look out for yourself. Yes, sir, I am. Yes, sir, I am. Happy Halloween, Dalton. Yes, 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 Hello, 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 you little rascal, you. Oh, 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 so that's why she disappeared, huh? To have her family. She called me Papa. Papa. Well, you naughty little girl. By golly. Papa. Well, say, by golly. Well, who would have thought? I guess Ming Toy did, too. Yes, yes, he must have. Yes, indeed. Oh. Oh, Papa. Look, Johnny, I'm a grandfather. I never did tell Gillis exactly how Ming Choi had been helped out of the apartment. All he knew was that Marion, for reasons of her own, had called off her engagement to Bill. Ming Choi spent a week in bed recovering from her ordeal, and naturally, since Gillis refused to let her appear on TV that night, the $50,000 went unclaimed. And, alas, the long-suffering public has yet to hear the dulcet tones of a talking dog named Ming Toy Murphy. Expense account total, including hotel, incidentals, and transportation back to Hartford, $225.70. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a vessel that was lost at sea suddenly turns up. Thanks to the true love of my gay young life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Charles Smith. It is produced and directed by Jack Comstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, G. Stanley Jones, Herb Ellis, Joseph Kern, Jay Novello, Bill James, and Howard McNear. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. <laughs>